International rugby returns to Houston as the USA Eagles play host to the French Barbarians right here on Flow Rugby. A warm July welcome from Aviva Stadium for tonight's game. Two teams with very different intentions. For the USA, all eyes are on Chile and the next three weeks to determine their World Cup dreams for 2023. For the Barbarians, a chance to shine for this next generation of French stars right here under the Lone Star Sky. Very warm welcome from Houston. Dan Powell with you alongside two USA Rugby legends. Mike Petri, James Patterson, and James, what a storied side this French Barbarians is. Historically, one of the most flair-filled attacking rugby teams in the world. Yeah, they are flair-filled. Since 1980, they've been dazzling the rugby world. They play with a unique motto and philosophy. They like to play champagne rugby. What does that mean? It means they're going to attack from anywhere on the pitch. Expect plenty of fireworks tonight. And for Mike... Listen, Gary Gold, he has to have a focus on Chile. The big part of that, AJ McGinty. A healthy AJ McGinty. Yeah, look, AJ McGinty is an absolute all-star for the USA. And when he is healthy, he is amazing. He's the pulse of this USA team. You could argue that right now, he's arguably one of the best tens in the Premiership over in England. It's so fun watching him play. He's an incredible playmaker. And his USA teammates feed off his energy and vision. They'll need him to work his magic here tonight like he does here, setting up the young rising star and another player to watch, Tevite Lopetti. Tevite Lopetti, one of the rising stars of USA Rugby. This year, perhaps the rookie of the year in Major League Rugby. He has been sensational since he put on the jersey. He is a powerful runner in the midfield. He will always break the first tackle, solid on defense, and he's exactly what you need to do to counter the experience in the French midfield. Out that experience, James, to the lineup for the French Barbarians tonight. Plenty of experience in this French Barbarian side, but let's look at the real leaders. Louis Picamol, 82 caps, the 10th most cap player for France. And in the back line, Francois Traduc, 66 tests. He is the inspiration and the leader on the field. Him versus McGinty in the 10 jersey battle will be one to watch tonight, Mike, as we take a look at the rest of this USA side. Yeah, USA coach Gary Gold has gone with some big units in the pack. He's got a powerful front row that will be bolstered by two towering six foot eight locks, Chivetta and Peterson. In the backs, we've spoken a lot about McGinty, and there's Devite Lopetti. But keep your eye on Mitch Wilson, who makes his first at USA appearance tonight. And on the bench, two recent Major League Rugby champions with Rugby New York, Chance Wangluski and Ben Benasso, ready to make their presence felt here in Houston. And Mike, it would be remiss of me not to go to you. Uh, one of the most decorated Eagles of all time, staring down the possibility of not qualifying for World Cup here. What's going through these players' heads as they go into this game? I mean, right now, they're just taking this one game at a time. So the World Cup qualifier is certainly in the back of their mind. They're thinking about it. It's there. They've probably talked about it a little bit this week. But the focus has to be getting through this French Barbarians team because as James mentioned earlier, they are a really good French side. And James, good side, experienced side. You saw the cowboy hats coming in. They've embraced the Texas lifestyle. They're really here to put on a great show for this crowd. Yeah, there's a mix in youth and experience. We're talking about experience. Their back line has 781 matches of professional rugby experience. If you compare that against the United States, 261. And what they do is they use that experience from the side to bring in young players. Adrian Lepenk. He is a up-and-coming star for them from Start France. He's a player that will just soak in all of the leadership and experience around him, and he will be one to watch today for sure. We see some pictures here of the crowd starting to make their way in to Aviva Stadium, home of the Houston Sabercats in Major League Rugby. The summer series, there you have it. Let's talk. You two both played at the 2011 World Cup in New Zealand. What does it mean to get to a World Cup, to play in a World Cup? What's going through the mind of not only the 23 men here tonight, but the entire squad going into the next few weeks? The World Cup is the pinnacle of rugby. I mean, James, you and I had an absolute blast at that tournament. 
it's one of those things where I remember playing in the 2007 World Cup, and it's all you think about. You know, when 2011 was over, the question was, do you want to still play to get through a whole other cycle? Because that's what it's all about. It's about that four-year cycle until the next World Cup. And so that's, they've got to be thinking about it. But again, they cannot overlook this Barbarians team because they are so good. That lineup is just filled with some French stars. As we take a look at the colours, those distinct colours, the sky blue from, blue from Cambridge, the dark from Oxford, and of course the blue from France. Here come the USA Eagles. You get a look at young Mitch Wilson on debut tonight. Well, CK returns to the Eagles jersey. He will be key going into this game and the next few weeks. McGinty, the steely look. There it is. The eyes from McGinty say it all. He knows the task that lays ahead, not only tonight. All right, gentlemen, keys here, James, early on for the French. Obviously, they, they want to put on a show here. Yeah, so what they're going to do is they're just going to really want to test out the Eagles' defense. They're going to go as wide as possible early. We know they're going to attack from anywhere in the field. And I wouldn't be surprised. It, we might even see a few trick plays tonight. That would be so much fun. I'd love to see that. And for the U.S., they're going to have to match that flair a little bit. We, we know that they're going to have some systems in place that they want to test out before Chile. But they've got to meet flair with flair a little bit and have a go at this French side. All right, we're going to go down onto the field at Aviva for the national anthems, first from the French and then from the United States of America. Anthem's done. Kickoff just moments away here. You know it's a big one when the anthems come out. Gentlemen, we were talking just a little bit earlier. Are there two better anthems in the sporting world than the French and the United States of America? I know certainly at every Rugby World Cup, the French, they love their anthem. They get behind it. It's, it's music to the ears, but formerly playing for the United States, standing shoulder to shoulder with your brothers and singing that anthem, it really gets you fired up. Yeah, I agree. That French anthem, we talked about the flair and the way they play, but the French anthem has so much flair in its tone and everything about it. You've seen some of the French players on the big stage getting very emotional in the big stadiums. It's really cool. 
Weather in Houston, storms earlier blew through the air, so it may be just a touch moist underfoot. 85-10, Lepetti. David and New, what a big moment it is for him. One of the bright young stars here in American rugby. Talk about stars, are there any bigger than Cam Dolan? And that man, Corval, right there. He has been electric. Capped multiple times for the French national team. He brings experience in the front row one, here two, tonight. Three. One, two, three. We are from Nola Gold. Another player looking to stake his claim. There's our referee tonight, Adam Jones, out of okay. Wales. He'll be ably assisted by Francisco Gonzalez and Peter Pender. Francisco ready. from Uruguay, Peter Bye -bye. from Canada. Time on. And new host is our TMO. Match official from Scotland, and we are underway here in Houston. Chavetta flies high for first use of the ball, but cannot Red. handle. Scrum. Only mistake in a scrum here. Our first look at the set piece for both of these sides. Just an early mistake there. It's not what you want to do when you Standard start. We know the one. restarts are Wait such an important course. part of the game, but this Plus. is the most important part tonight. The platform will be everything, and how the USA goes in this defensive scrum will set the tone for the rest of the evening. Crouch. Bind. Set. Bergeon with the feed in. He'll move this. To the right, looking for his fly half in Traduk. Looping runners. Traduk with the ball in hand again. Lapeg. Tackle midfield. As the French push just shy of the 22 metre line. Traduk again. Short side this time. Finding Ducroix. Bergeon. Quick service as he moves to the left centre field here. For the Barbarians outside the 22. Try to wide ball. And there you see the interchange early on from this French side. Very happy to throw the ball What's around, the but not gaining a lot of meters there against the USA Light defense, out. Mike. Going side to side a little bit, but at the same time, very noticeable. The US, I don't know if it's a tactic that they're trying to employ right now, but they're not putting anybody into these defensive rucks. And we talked about how France, this, this French Barbarians team, likes to play really fast. They're going to have to try to slow this ball at the breakdown because as this game starts to wear on, if they continue to give quick ball to this French side, it could be a really Don't long close. day on defense for them. Good. Manadia with the throw, taken well here by the Barbarians. Manadia at the back. Out of the Alpi club. In the French top 14. Through the middle, turn over. Turned over cleanly go. by the Eagles, though. De Haas at the back will look to kick and clear. Touch Under pressure. pressure. May have got a hand there of Bergeon. There's Picamol. Recycles well, they go wide. Little juggle there oh, from seven, the inside seven. center. Argion. Likes to go to the boot and finds a sideline. Again. A lot of enterprising play, exactly what you expected coming into this one, James. Yeah, just some experience there on the outside. You the saw that from Pierre Argion. On the line, just got a little bit messy, but this man, 35 years old, he's played over 10,000 minutes of top 14 rugby, 155 matches. He's going to be the one to settle down, and they're going to put lots of pressure on this line out as a result. How many minutes have you played, Mike? <laughs> no, definitely not 10,000 minutes. That's a lot of minutes of rugby. we will be feeling that in about 10 years. I have to divide that by 80 and figure yeah. out exactly what that is. <laughs> the Filetti at the back as the USA have the advantage. Clearing kick. And now for the first time, just three and a half minutes gone, Entry. they will have an opportunity to get the ball out of their own end. And that's the relief that the US needs right now. They've been for this first three and a half minutes playing defense, parked up in their own end. And like we said, though, nice job defensively forcing the French team to go side to side. They give themselves a penalty there, get themselves up over the halfway line for the first time in this match. 
entry from the back, please, not in the center. Make sure we stay back now, okay? Christian Dyer on home turf here, played for the Sabercats in 2022 as Piffoletti with the throw. It's tapped down by Massais. Under pressure from Bergeon. Busy start for the number nine for the French Barbarians. As De Haas looks for his big ball carriers first through Dolan. Turnover is clean let though. Let him go, let him go. Fine. Jimmy Maximum was the man responsible for the French. And this is where they're going to be dangerous. Off the quick turnover ball. They look to attack these channels wide. Bergeon. Allows for another forward to go. For a var. Little handling error from Traduc. Just took a little look up in the juggle of the ball. 85 degrees with all the moisture down there. Handling could be a problem today, James. I don't think they're used to any of this humidity in France. You played in France. Does it get this humid anywhere there? Good, good discipline. I'm trying to think how many years ago that was. I don't even remember. The red wine was good. I do remember that. <laughs> so we look at the turnover here. Yeah, Traduc, one of the most experienced players. Uncharacteristic error, but you can already see, Mike, they're applying a lot of pressure on the inside channels, just trying to force them to slow that ball down. Yeah, they are. And you know what? This French team, we talked about that they want to play fast. They're trying to go up the middle a little bit, force that interior defense of the U.S. to collapse, and then try to play around them a little bit faster. Crow. Find, set. Bergeon right in front of referee that. Jones just shoves to Haas. Number nine, let's just push the opposite number nine. <laughs> I've seen a lot of that go, go on a line screw. I mean, we're number sitting nine, here laughing the at this. The ball. We've seen a lot of that stuff, and there's a lot of back and forth between nines, but I mean, that time in particular, Ruben Haas just went flying across our screen. And referee Adam Jones is standing right there and just, I don't even know if he has the penalty name for it. He just puts his arm on it. He's like, you can't just go and push the nine like that. Did you see that replay? I mean, you played nine. How, how important is it to get the other nine's head early in the game? Oh, absolutely. There's a constant mental battle throughout the entire game, and it starts early. And especially there, you got Ruben De Haas. Yes, he's played a lot of games for the U.S. recently. He's playing at Saracens. He's got some experience to him, but he's still only 23 years old. Backwards so if you're the French on. Barbarians team, you're definitely going to try to want to get under his skin early. Another turnover here for the Barbarians, and they will shift wide. Traduc looks for the midfield. They've got numbers. They've got space. Ducroix feeds his winger in Lepeg. Drag down just short. Another turnover Come in from, from the, the side. Straight in the side to take up the Jackler. Dubia Jean-Baptiste. Taking up Jackla. That was a good job by Moni Tongawea there. So the interior defense in the United States on the outside. They got to the outside and they shut the gate. What that meant is the French Barbarians, they couldn't retreat to come back through the gate in order to get over the top of the ball. It was a side entry. Gone dead. Option. Mistake off the boot of McGinty as we take a look at the replay, gents. Lots of mistakes so far from both teams. That one from McGinty, uncharacteristic. We saw the opposite 10 for the Barbarians. Trinduk, I mean, he's making some uncharacteristic handling errors early on. So, you know, you wonder, like, the French Barbarian team just kind of mingled together this past week. Yes, they play at a high level. Yes, they play professionally. But the same is true of the U.S. team. They both, they're all coming from all over the country, all over the world, wherever they play at, and they're trying to be thrown together in the past six or seven days. And we know what that's like to try to put a test side team together so quickly. And some of those mishaps happen, especially early on in this type of game. Yeah, James, if you take out Lopetti and Chavetta, who played in the championship game for MLR last weekend, a lot of these players haven't played in, in some of them numerous weeks. Yeah, several weeks off, and it's always difficult. When you go to test match rugby, and you go to these high-level games like this, it's about getting back into that system, a new system, and it often takes the first 10 or 15 minutes to really find your feet. Just release your bind, round. Number one is released to find handball. So against around. young Dave Anu. Plays his rugby in France. So probably familiar with a couple of these Taking players. The arm off and that's caused the scrum to collapse. Traduc finds the sideline just shy of the 22 meter line. Big Greg Peterson. What a threat he is. 
Hunko Hermesais left New York to go to the champions LA. New York become the champions. Manadia with the throw is good. Tap down under pressure. Dolan on the spot. Bourjon. Again, looking to shift this ball quickly to his right. Chaduk to his left. Looking for runners. Yeah, another strong tackle there from Dolan. He's had a busy start on defense to this game. Shipped out the back. They go wide looking for some space. Wilson on debut one-on-one -on -one with his opposite. Does a great job. Yeah. Does a brilliant yeah. job. That's a good first involvement there from Wilson. Yeah, definitely. We talked a lot about Mitch Wilson and the impact he's had with the New England Free Jacks. He's had an outstanding season for them. Unlucky for them that they lost in the conference finals to New York, but as an individual, he has just been brilliant for him, and there he is. This is one of the things that he does best. He's just such an aggressive player, puts pressure on his opposite, wins the turnover for the USA. James, the French, a lot of lateral movement, not a lot of north-south. Are they just not respecting this USA defense enough here? More. Yeah, they're not, and the USA is Wait. very strong on the inside, so they're going to have to adjust their game plan to get outside that blitz. If you watch narrow off every ruck, the US is firing up. Outside them is where that seam is. De Haas clears. Great kick from young Ruben De Haas. As you can see the socks there. One of the traditions of the Barbarians is they wear their club socks. A lot of fun traditions in behind teams like this. And it's, it's a great tradition in the game. Obviously spawned out of the other Barbarian side that we see in the white and black. They still have the same amount of fun. From what I understand, being on tour is a very enjoyable experience. Looking to have some fun here with ball in hand. Who are the Barbos? Am I allowed to call them the Barbos? I think someone don't want to upset any of the purists here. Oh, big collision midfield. Thumping tackle comes in from Peterson. Mullen looks to finish it off. And now Chavetta gets involved as well. And the turnover. That's a brilliant Release little gap of play, play the there ball. from the United Hold States. And I really like the opportunistic defense that the U.S. is playing. I faulted them a little bit earlier on, talking about that they're not getting involved in the breakdown, not challenging this French team. What they're trying to do is just fan out and get numbers on their feet. It's worked for them. They've forced this French team side to side. But you can see there's a clear intent that when the opportunity calls for it, they're going to go after the ball. And that was the perfect opportunity. Knocked them backwards, about a 10-meter loss, straight over top of the ball, good body position, earning themselves a really good turnover. And that's one of the good things. When you have the, the strong, powerful defense, it really frees up frees up your loose forward trio to be able to get in and over the top of the ball. Obviously, Hooker working hard there as well with Pifoletti. Okay. It was five on you five. Need to stay Peterson on, the mark on Maximon. And, the, gap. The, next and one the big will be a man, tech. Jimmy Maximon, just didn't Keep get the, the body height down. Absolutely belting tackle there from Peterson. Over 15. Line out. Woes continue for the United States. That one tapped back. Clemesize now. Now Pifoletti. USA, their first trip inside the 22 here. McGinty set to the right. It's slow ball. It's only a USA body there. Hands up. Balls out, play on. Interesting play. I thought the ball was still under those feet of the players connected to that ruck. Referee disagrees, and now the French with the turnover. They will attack from inside their 22. Ball comes down to Ducroix. Maximon again. Look at Peterson. Had the lasers set on his opposite. Looking for another big shot. Now poor John at the back. Kicks downfield. Brucky safe. Returns fire off the right foot. Looking to use the Texas Sun. Ball will sit up. Deep in goals here at Aviva Stadium. Goal line dropout then. And we'll go to the goal line dropout here for the French Barbarians. 
And not sure that that's really what the U.S. wanted out of that counterattack. I think it lo looks like the ball kind of sliced off of Bracky's foot there. Maybe not exactly where he wanted to place it. Put it over that in goal area. But like you said, it's really deep. So he has that luxury that he had some space to play with. So not such a bad scenario. They do get the 22-meter dropout result as opposed to coming way back to where he kicked That's it from at halfway. So we'll see what they can muster up off this counterattack. Last time we saw a similar situation like this, Ruben De Haas kicked a drop goal up in Denver. Would love to see some of that magic. I think the altitude was 5,000 feet. Here it's about five feet. De Haas goes back. De Haas, he does it again. You couldn't have called it any better. <laughs> We got Nostradamus with us in here. Oh, look, if you've done it once, you can tell he's got the confidence to do it again. We talked about this before the game. We were going through the players in the lineups. And we talked about, yes, Dehaz is very young, but he's very confident. And most importantly, he's got a really good set of feet to him. He can kick really well. And that's one of those situations. He's going to hang out at midfield. You give him that goal line dropout. You give him some space, get three points on the board, and get that scoreboard ticking over. Well done, Ruben. Ginty flies high on the 22 to reclaim that kickoff. Dolan at the back. Looking to provide a platform for De Haas. Peterson flat footed. As they try to reset this in the 22. Gives an assist to De Haas here to kick this out on the floor. Onside for me then. You dick. Finds the line. French threatening to go quick. Ducroix doesn't pull the trigger. It just, yeah. And here it is again. Uh, copybook technique. Great strike. That was good from another 10 15 out. And he's already been so composed in this match. His kicking, he's got a very strong kicking game. Case in point here, great clearance, relieving a lot of pressure. Midfield crash there. Dubi up, picks up. He's inside centre. Haji on. Now the forwards will carry. Number five red offside, okay, advantage, five red. Tradu takes the line on aggressively. Still play the advantage. No advantage, number five offside. Mark on you, Pete. Number five, yes. Take a look at Stephen Brett, number backs five, coach there. Red offside. Big part of, you know, there's a lot of continuity in this USA backline. And we're starting to see it. Just watching the way they're defending in this game. They're defending very solidly in the midfield, giving very few options for players to step off their inside or outside. And Mike, for a backs coach, not a lot in this opening 16 minutes. It feels like the USA haven't really shifted the ball to the back line. I can't remember one of the outside okay. backs or even the centre pairing in the Petty or Campbell getting touches. No, we haven't. The only time we've really seen the threat on attack has been through two hard carries. One of them was by Hanko Hermeshais right there on our screen. And then they turned it over at the one metre line. So frustrating for the backs right now, but only a matter of time really before this game starts to open up. More! French Barbarians will maul this well into the 22. Looking to stake their claim for a first try of this game. Bourgeon, I do look at the footwork, keeps it alive. Bourgeon, enveloped by Chavetta. The French now keeping things a little tighter. Trying to bring that USA defense in. Another pick and go here from the French. Knocking on the door. Another. They're over. Can they get it down? Piffoletti. Brilliant. Held up. And we'll go to the gold line dropout here for the USA. Excellent job there by Piffoletti to get underneath the ball. I mean, they were under so much pressure. Just phase after phase after phase. You could see the fatigue from some of those forwards right now. Greg Peterson, hands overhead. I mean, it, they were just Next going backwards that whole time from that mall. It was a good mall from the French side. And then, like James talked about, they're finding those seams right alongside those rucks. We talked about Flair and wanting to play wide, but they didn't need to. They were just going right up the middle. 
Absolute bomb from McGinty over the halfway line. Counter-attack, Ducroix. Or Jean to his right. Manadia. Try Duke now. Continues to go wide. Dubia. Picks up his winger. Asabi. Some more. More. Asabi needs to find his way to the ground. Does just that. Goes here. Messi at the breakdown there. Both sides look to be pleading for a penalty. Adam Jones can only put one arm up, though. That pass may have drifted forward. Peterson. Johnny on the spot. Secures possession here for the Eagles. De Haas. Will they attack? Piffoletti. Good hands. Stop. 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 Now you're on. The French waiting. Ducroix. Ducroix. It's the accelerator. Decelerates quickly in the shoulder of Tongawea. Tradu, short side, turns it back in for Wumat. In turn, picks up another runner. Pass doesn't go to hand. Then it says Wilson, Wilson with the juggle. Now some space for Mitch Wilson. Little chip over the top. Needs the bounce. Look who's pursuing for the Barbarians. It's a big man, Corito. Only in Houston, Texas, would you see the prop outrunning the winger. 11 on side. Use it. And now slow ball for the French. They will clear the 22. Bourjon. Water break. We will take a quick I'll hydration you, break. Okay. This game came alive in the last five minutes, Mike. It was, it was a bit of an arm wrestle. The French dominating possession and territory early, and all of a sudden the game just started to shift. It really did. And look at these bodies from the French team. I mean, right before that ball went out of bounds, you were taking a look at the number five, Maxima, and that number three, Coato, who did make that play going backwards to stop Mitch Wilson. But they are tired on their feet. We talked about that this has been a fun tour, probably lots of flair off the field. You wonder how much that's going to start to catch up with them now as the game starts to wear on and they realize they're in an arm wrestle with this Eagles team. Surely he can't have come from in the defensive line. <laughs> We're going to have to pull a replay. He would have had We've to be tying his shoelaces at the halfway line. Give him line some credit. Something. Give him some credit just because no he's chance. got a single digit. Just because he has no a single I mean, digit. Well, he's, doesn't he, mean he can't hustle back. He's 24 years old. He's played 68 top 14 games. But still, I mean, it's impressive, man. I, that was really, that was not what any of us expected, namely Mitch Wilson. Imagine yourself as a wing. And you find yourself in open space, you chip a chase over the top, and you look up, and the guy you're having a foot race with is a prop. You would like, yeah. your eyes would this, light this up. This is the right? thing on the fence. Quit looking at the right now. Look up what's in front of you. Good. Keep it up now, boys. Just going to practice with a little bit harder to speed to sit. Now, Ty, okay, so if we get our speed to sit, we can get through okay. here, boys. Hey, hey, hey. Let's go. Keep up here. Good job, hey. Mitchell Wilson, go work. Obviously, some words in the huddle there. Mike, I think, you know, if you look at what's going on in the game so far, just being able to absorb pressure. We talked to some of the players about their path this week and in terms of where they're focusing. They're, they're fully focused on this match. They've got a big game next weekend, but it was about absorbing the pressure early on to be able to put their foot on the gas as the match moves forward. Yeah, absolutely. And you've seen some of that energy start to creep in. They came out quite slow. You wonder when they're just going to turn it up a notch and see that needle start to really move because this Eagles team has it in them. It's just a matter of when. Another steal there for Rumada. The line out, the number seven for the French, has been magnificent early on. This kick finds the line. That's a big turnaround and a big pickup there for this Barbarians out there. Line out's been a source of struggle so far for the Eagles. They've had line a couple out. set pieces that haven't gone the way that they had hoped. Okay. That one in particular, prime territory opportunity for them to actually put something together maybe get their back line involved can't bring that one down and then all of a sudden you're marching 50 60 meters back down the other direction this one goes over a little knee through there from mcginty after all that the ball ends up back in the hands of the french barbarians Poraval. oh what an offload from Poraval. 
There's the opening try of the game, right under the post. Argion, and all the lead-up work from Jefferson Poirvo, though, gets it done. French Barbarians on the board, five points to three. Unbelievable stuff and experience. The man, he's played 36 tests, started 33 of them. It was his injection into the line, and then obviously the support line for Pierre Argion. That's a bit of the flair that we're used to, and they haven't been able to free their hands so far in the game, Mike. No, they haven't. And you know what, though? This comes out of two direct mistakes from the U.S. Two line-out mishaps led them to this position that they're in right now. The first one on the other end of the field, turnover. France kicks it back downfield. This one goes over the top, and then look at that injection that you talked about from Agion. I mean, as a 12, that's the sort of energy and injection that you need. And look at, more importantly, that offload from Pouba, I mean, that was exceptional stuff from a front row forward, and that's two front row forwards for the French Barbarians that have done two pretty awesome things. The kick chase we saw earlier on, and that little offload for the try. I can promise you, we're not getting paid by the mention. <laughs> They're used to not finding any time on the mic, but today they've been standing up early. We watched some of the footage of these players from the French Barbarian you know, during the week, and one of the highlights was for Ravaz's ability to offload the contact. We saw it just there. The transition from right-hand carry, left-hand carry back, the offload just brilliant stuff in the front row. But this is what we, we, you know, this is what is so important for this Eagles team is the errors that cost them so dearly. And it was those two lineouts that when you play a team with the sort of experience that James has been talking about, like the French Barbarians, they will make you pay for those mistakes. Restart goes deep. Ducroix. Is he game for the fullback? Bergeon. Pick up the captain. Taken in. Sazi. Stop. Low driving kick. Well fielded though. Dolan. Weighs up his options. Crashes back into the French line. May have hurt one of the players there too. It's the speedster in Corto. McGinty. Little chip over the top. Can't escape. Traduc though. Bourgeon. Kick goes down. Brucky this time. They look to kick. Right foot. Looking for a corner. Finds. Qua, Time off, just where we have a look at the player here as well. We have an injured player. Tiki Corto as well, who hey, took hey. a nasty collision against Cam Dolan. Yeah, that was a smart play there by Duqua. He knew it, a player down, deciding to take the mark, settle down. Looks like all players are back to their feet. But it was a strong carry from Dolan in the back. Yeah, he had a, he had a good about 20-meter run up on this one. Weighs up his options and then, yeah, right in the hip. Gets low in the tackle, catches that thigh of Cam Dolan coming yeah, through in contact. And like we said, just good leg drive from Cam that time. Just Not a side of Cam that we are used to seeing things. as far as powerful carry goes. Yeah, We're much up. more likely to see Cam Dolan in open field play. He's very versatile that time. Decides to tuck it under his arm, though, and have a go. And the Barbarians pay the price. We'll get him checked out. Hopefully he's okay. Black on the line. USA on the line, Red. This has been the challenge thus far in the opening 25 minutes. The line out for the Eagles. As we look forward to the Chile games, home and away coming up, James. The line out continues to struggle. Is that a concern? It has to be a concern. Yeah, you would. And that's usually, if you look at the selections they made today, Leaving out Brakely, perhaps to get the advantage in the lineout, that has to pay off. That one deflected is now to Quarles kick. Forward. It's a booming kick from the fullback too, up into the Texas Sun. Wilson, let's see what Mitch Wilson can do. A couple of great early involvements from him on debut. Tradu flicks it out the back. Ooh, off it almost goes forward. to hand. Doesn't stick. Yep. But D was flying through. 
Almost another big break there for the Barbarians. We got to be, you know, if you're the U.S. team, you got to talk a little bit about clogging that contact area. We've got, we've seen this French team go into contact, get their arms free, and throw those offloads. So if you're the U.S., I know we're not seeing them put a lot of pressure on the breakdown area, but you definitely need to pressure that area around the collision to avoid some of these these offloads because that there, if that goes to hand, that's another big break for the Babas going the other direction. Good platform here from the Eagles. De Haas at the back, peels off. McGinty through. That's Dyer right through. Great play. Christian Dyer, one to beat. He'll do it all himself. Ruben De Haas, he's the provider. Christian Dyer, what a try from the youngster. The hometown hero, Christian Dyer. We talked about playing at his home ground. The Houston Sabercats in the MLR, they had a fantastic year. He had a fantastic year, but he found himself a lot at outside center as he salutes the crowd that's probably there supporting him and some of the other Sabercats players. He's finding himself now on the right wing, but that's how you go look for the ball. Great play here by DeHaz. Just all he does is hold his nine on that near side along the scrum and give that seam between the 9-10 channel for Dyer to sneak in. Dyer's hiding out behind the scrum on the right-hand side. Shows up at the last second. Way too quick that time for Picamol to collapse down. Nobody sees him coming. Great line from Dyer. A good setup that time from DeHaas as well. So the second time we've seen DeHaas do something really special for the U.S. in this game tonight. Yeah, it's a miscommunication on defense there. You could see Francois Trotuk. He was looking. He thought the seven was going to break off and push nine across. And it was just completely unmarked. That'll be about as easy of a try as you get at this level. Conversion successful by McGinty. Ten points to seven. USA reclaim the lead. The well, Don, think you said it, Mike. He was just hanging out behind the scrum there. And next thing he pops out, I thought it was McGinty who got there so quickly. I had to quickly change course. I actually thought it was McGinty as well, and then I saw that little stripe down the back of his head, and I thought, no way, that's not a McGinty hairstyle. That's a Christian Dyer hairstyle. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> uh, I'm going to remain impartial on this one and say they both put out good looks on the field. How's that sound, James? This one comes back. David New. De Haas. Slow ball. Picks up Peterson. Use it! The house goes high. We want this one to stay in the field of play. Pressure coming. No pressure at all. Brilliant take there from Duquois. Try Duke. Little kick through. Needs a chase. Doesn't have it. This could be trouble. Brucky on the fly. Great defense, though. Comes in from the French. Abadi. Now it peels away. Pick a mole. Finds Dolan. We've been a touch offside there. Adam Jones agrees. The ruck has formed here. Yeah, he never eight, got back, back onside. The ruck had formed on the side. inside. Clever little kick in behind there. It was dangerous because those are the dangerous plays that a guy like Brucky can take advantage of. But the ability for them to play quick, I think that's the key here. If the French Barbarians really want to take advantage of the defensive pressure, they've got to play quick. You got to wonder a little bit, James, can they play quick? You know, we saw them showing up with their cowboy hats. It's been probably a real good week for them down here in Houston. You wonder how much of this game they've really been like doing all the strength conditioning this week as if they were preparing for one of their big French test match and how much time they've actually spent doing the social bonding stuff off the field. And again, having played down in Texas, all of us have, it is warm. Even though it's late in the evening here in Texas, it is warm on that field. might see deep into this game the yeah, 60 yeah, or 70th it. minute those eyes might turn from focus to regret for some of the uh, midweek activities yeah good Manadia goes high More. picks up Abadi okay, another strong ball here pick a mole peels off quick hands Traduk, they've got numbers. 
USA scrambling. Pass up B, kick through, knows he has in goal. Deep in goal. Not deep enough. Yes, 22 or scrum five. Bit of confusion on both sides there. They elect to get the 22 because it did go dead. But smart play there, Mike. They were down there recycling quickly. They knew they had the end goal, just ran out of space. Yeah, that end goal in that, okay, in that Houston outside, Stadium is so big. And you got to imagine that when you look up, you see a wall of blue jerseys in front of you and that Eagles defense that's been coming at you. You want to put that ball in behind them in just another couple of inches, and that's a very different outcome okay. for the French side. Option, so I like the option. Line out. Scrum called. Ooh. AJ McKenzie putting that one out in the full. That's a, a big mistake there for the number 10. James, how difficult to defend that as, as an outside back, in particular a winger defending your try line, knowing that you've got 20 metres of in goals behind you. You've got to be hesitant, rushing up, then they can kick behind you, and then obviously the momentum's with the attacking team to charge through and get that. I mean, you just got to look for your nine and your blindside wing to do work because you've got to be up on the line defending. That's usually when you have the advantage. You bring the extra man into the line. You've got to end goal like that. It really changes things. Okay, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. Okay, time off. Focus to me then, please. Okay. Okay. I told him in the change room I would give you a marker's middle. You understand? Yeah. Understand? We go to the left of the mark and we stop messing around, okay? We get the space and we then go down. To the left of the mark, the next one will be a free kick. Let's go, please. So here is the mark. And you find the slot and in your slot. Find back on. It's a very matter of fact conversation <laughs> going on there, Mike. I mean, look. If if you're a referee, imagine it, you know, you're sitting there talking to some of the biggest players on the field and you're trying to tell them what's going on right there. And he's just he's just telling them exactly how it is. He's not happy with it. He gives you the mark. Look, let's just play rugby, fellas, and let's just get on with it. I like it. A Welshman talking to a Frenchman in Houston, Texas. What could go wrong? <laughs> That's right. Ball at the back. Pick a mole. De Jean turns it back inside. Change of direction, dangerous here for the French. Bergeon again to his right. What a ball. You get those arms again. Traduk, the big in goals. Brucky's there. Brucky's there. He'll let that option. one trickle. Dead in goal. Cool we will come out. Now the option. Do you take the scrum here? The... The 22 didn't work last time. Now a little bit more of relief. No, McGinty's going quick and he drives this downfield. Turns the French around into their own 22. Traduc will wait. He has time. Bergeon. It's fine. Wilson also has time. But a jump step as he goes up towards the 40 meter line here of the Barbarians. Mullen. Little tip on to Peterson. De Haas again. What did Ruben ha De Haas do to this French side? They slapped him on the head. They're pushing him earlier. He must look like someone in the south of France that these guys know. But we will be getting another look at that. He's got a good whack on the head when he bent over to pick that ball up. As Ducroix looks to attack. La Pegue. Menadia met by a strong tackle again from Dolan. Mike, you mentioned it earlier, a much more physical game from Cam Dolan tonight. You're right, he's, he's very athletic, he loves the open field, but he's been mixing it up tonight. He has been, that was a great hit from him that sets up that, that turnover for them. But again, that's the second handling error now that we've seen from Traduk, and you wonder if some of this heat and some of this humidity is starting to catch up with him, trying to do a little bit too much, too quickly, and we're at a water break at 35 minutes, five minutes before the halftime. I think even some of the players are confused. We, we just had a water break 15 minutes water ago, break. but Pardon? referee Adam Jones, maybe he was out uh -huh. in the social circles with the French uh, this week, needs a little yep. hydration himself. I mean, he's a referee. He can call what he wants. Did All right, 10-7. Thoughts so far. James, is so, this what you expected? Because it's not what I expected. I thought this was going to be an absolute shootout. 
impression so far, the defensive line from the United States has been very good. The pressure they're applying. Now you can see what the Barbas are trying to do. They're trying to soften up the defense. How do you soften up a blitz defense? You put the ball in behind. You start to get them second guessing whether you're going to get in behind them. So it'll be interesting to see whether those kind of that game of chess, Mike, will be able to soften up this U.S. defensive line. Yeah, from the U.S. perspective, we really haven't seen them come alive yet. You know, outside of that, that one score that we saw off that set piece move, they really haven't had much of an offensive threat here. They've just been playing that territory game, kicking the ball upfield. We've seen some work through the forwards, but they've really struggled at set piece time in the lineout. So they haven't really been able to launch anything. So when you go into the halftime locker room in about five minutes or so, that's got to be one of the messages is when we get those opportunities, clean that up and let's start to capitalize and start to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Adjustments you want to see made here, James. Let's just focus on the USA for this one. What do they need to change? Very little ball in phase play, like Mike said. They've lost possession of the line out. They have to fix the line out. The line out's one of the best attacking platforms in rugby. If you can't win your own ball, you're going to struggle. You look at the bench Mahoney, Bonasso, your two real line out threats. Joe Talfetti also on the bench to come on at hooker. I don't think it's Pefletti's throw that's the issue. It seems to be the contest from the French at the lineout that's causing problems. Crouch. Bind. Early push. The reset. We. Corto back on. He's cleared HIA protocols. And we stay down in the contest and I'll deal with that, okay? Let's go again, please. Same ball. So stay down. And nothing early. Go to the contest and I'll deal with it. Fourth of July weekend coming up here. Everyone in a very festive mood. What you go to for the fourth of July, Mike? A hot dog or a hamburger guy? Uh probably more of a traditional grilled chicken guy these days, but growing up I probably got a bit of both. Grilled chicken with that physique. What did you expect? Had his shirt off earlier today. He's walking through. I didn't realize he was Mike Perry. How old are you? Are you 23, 24? Looking electric as always. Speaking of electric, look at Lepetti. Look at Tavita Lepetti. Who can stop Lepetti? He's brought down just inches from the line. Dolan looking for an opportunity. Picks up Pefaletti instead. Assists come in. Anu at the line, grounding, Adam Jones likes it. There's the second try of the first half for the Eagles. They extend their lead 15 points to seven. Lepetti, we talked about it before the game. We highlighted the package. This can go to the top of the list. I don't think there's a more balanced runner in the Northern Hemisphere than Lepetti. It's a big call, but if you watch him, his ability to be able to run through tackles and maintain balance is key. We're going to see Mike in the highlight here. He just trucks and keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. I hate to break it to you, James. He was a rookie in the MLR this year. This was his first season of professional rugby out of St. Mary's College in California. But, man, this kid can absolutely flat-out play. I mean, he was exceptional for the Seawolves. And in their playoff run late in the season when he got injured and he wasn't in their lineup, I was a little bit worried for him. I wasn't seeing his name in that, in that lineup, and I thought, oh, man, they're going to miss him a lot. I mean, he is just a class player. And only five caps and so young is Lopetti. He's first against the New Zealand All Blacks. The crazy thing, James, we know the reputation the All Blacks carry. He didn't look out of place. In fact, he looked like he belonged against the All Blacks. Ever since he stepped into the English, and remember, he, he was playing for the U.S. before he played any professional rugby. So he had his first experience, and you talk about these young players that come through, these once-in-ten-year type players six. that you uncover in the United States. He's one of these players, and he's only going to get better. How young is he? The next Mike Petrie, is he at that level? You know, I think that's a big call. We're not going to make a call that big, especially close to Independence Day. But... We were talking a lot about Lopetti, but how about that man right there who actually gets the credit for the try? Let's give that man some kudos because he finished that off. Great run by Lopetti, but I knew he is the one that actually dots it down and gives the points on the board for the U.S. So he slipped over there, Dyer, as he came to, I think he was waiting for the ball to drop out of bounds, lost his foot and kicked it out. So 
This is a really crucial point in the game for the Barbars. Just a minute and a half left on the clock. Critical moments here for the USA, who hold on to a 10-point lead over the French. We see some changes already coming into the forward pack there for the Barbarians. Dabajia. Now on the field, Dongawea scrambles back. USA will probably look to slow this down and wind the half out. De Haas, under pressure, does well. Has been touched as well. Looks like there's a deflection off a of French hand, so this will go to the USA. They're not ready to shut it down just yet. Oh, and that's a big turn. I was about to say that was a great clearance kick from De Haas. It's an even better clearance kick now that we know that the French got a hand on it, and we're going to have a... Oh. We were expecting a USA line out there. It sounded like he said it was touched. I think he said it was touched. Oh, touched at the, at the sideline. Gotcha. I thought he said touched on the way out, and I thought, oh, man, that's a big turn. You and me both, Mike. We both got fooled there. As the French will look to strike back here before the halftime break. And come wide. Again, this lateral movement of the ball. The USA have not bit down yet on defense. They've been very patient. Bergeon. Traduc. Quick hands. Port of all. Pass goes back. Takes the venom out of the attack. As that high kick goes down to Brucky. Brucky returns fire. An even higher kick. Mark inside the 22 here for the French. The ball, is that a game plan thing we're seeing so far? It seems like every time Brucky gets the ball back there, we're returning fire. It'd be great to see, you know, one of the most dangerous facets of play is what you do off a counter-attack. 40 minutes in the books here at Aviva Stadium. The USA, they came to life in the last 15. They will head to the halftime break ahead. 17 points to seven over the French Barbarians. We will step away when we return. All the action continues. The second half and highlights coming up right after this. USA versus the French Barbarians. 17 points to seven. What a first half it was. Plenty of action from both these sides, Mike. And it was this great drop kick to begin with. Three points, that shot tracer there. Great individual effort. But this was the play of the first half for me. I love this excellent individual effort from Porovo. This is really the only attacking set they've got. And it was their ability to free the ball. Look at the skill execution here. Finds the player. Pierre Aguillon scores under the post. But the USA answered right back with this big run off of this scrum. They struggled with the lineouts in the first half, but this is a great set piece move that time. Bryce Campbell comes hard at the line, takes the eyes off of Christian Dyer, hiding in behind the scrum, finds himself a seam and five points for the USA. Another set piece scrum a platform for them, and this time, this is all to Vite Lopetti. We've talked about him a lot in this broadcast. One defender beaten. Two defenders can't beat him down. There's three defenders that can't bring him down. It takes a number of French Barbarian players to bring him down until finally he's pulled up just a couple of meters short. And then the USA forwards get to go to work. And it's capped off right there by Anui to put five points on the board for the USA. And the extra two from McGinty gives them that 17 to seven lead going into the half. All right, gentlemen, 10-point deficit for the French. Can they overcome it, James? And what adjustments do they need to make here in the second half? Well, you talk about their, their whole ethos. They're free from pressure and a need to win. Yeah, that, that, that's their mindset. But really, in order to put themselves in a position to win, they're going to have to start getting behind this defensive line. They look to try and soften them up with the kicks behind, but they're really going to have to free the hands and the offloads. But it's really difficult to do so far against this defensive line speed. And Mike, what do you want to see from the Eagles? Let's, let's put a focus on what they've got laying ahead of them against Chile, home and away. If you're Gary Gold, what's your message at halftime? What do you want to see in the second 40? I think James hit the nail on the head in that first half. It's got to be Bobo's a conversation ready. about the lineouts. USA. They're doing great off scrums. Two Fine. tries in the game. Both of them came off scrums. But lineouts just aren't good enough right now. Got to clean that up. Got to get those ticking. 
Adam Jones blows time on for the second half here at Aviva Stadium. An early turnover for the USA off the restart, and Brucky will look to spread this wide. Thermosize. The big man from Los Angeles. Good defense comes up. Great offload. Anu, great offload again. Campbell. Campbell dragged down just outside the 22 now. Pass from DeHaas, one bounce. Pethaletti. Advantage here for the Eagles. Now DeHaas to his right. Looping pass, a little juggle from Lopetti. Two French defenders. They'll pay close attention to Vita Lopetti this half. McGinty, crossfield kick, may have been deflected. Looking for Wilson. Wilson could have been no taken advantage. in the air there. No advantage. He'll come all the way back. A little slow to his feet too, Wilson. Sounds Looks to be okay, though. Okay. The ability for this USA side it, to be able to free the hands, as we see here, just an opportunistic play, looking to get the tap back in there. But this is something that we haven't seen a lot from Eagles sides, the ability to be able to interchange. And, and it's these players coming in. I knew these players with all this experience, being able to free the hands in contact, get in behind the defensive line. That's where you're going to really get a lot of purchases with that quick ball. Mike, we're going to get a look at the line out very early on here in the second half. you got to think that in this situation, they've got to go to their mall. You see Ruben De Haas is 10 meters back. Anko Hermeshais is there in the scrum half spot, so you know they're going to mall. This is something that when they face the Chileans over the next two weeks, they're going to have to get this right. Mall! First one is successful. Ben Bonasso on Collapse. the field as well now for the Eagles in the 20 jersey. Advantage. Dragged down by the French. De Haas, Campbell, left foot. No advantage. Collapse. And now a little bit of an argument on the field. Bonasso. <laughs> having a discussion with some of the French players. And they're having a discussion right back. And it continues to boil over here at Aviva. Let's take number a listen into Adam Jones here, gents, and see exactly eight, how he dissects the situation. Seven. Uh, uh, Wait, what? I expect when I blow my whistle, the game to stop. Because when that happens, we have players running in and it escalates the situation. You understand? I don't need any more. The penalty is against number one collapse. It stops now. Penalty. Oh, oh, it's well today. No, no harm, no foul. And the side entry. Well, ben Benasso, though, coming in and just creating sparks right away. Gets on the field and just starts to light things up. And the U.S. opting here for going for points. You would have thought, in this type of game, in this situation, though, you got nothing to lose, right? Nothing lost, nothing gained. I know you want to keep the scoreboard ticking over, but I think you might want to go to the corner in that situation. What do you think, James? Yeah, especially with the pressure on. They created the pressure at the mall to deliver the penalty in the first place. You get in a situation with repeat infringements, you're looking at playing a man down. You see the highlights. But, you know, the strategic positioning of the halfback, joining at the very last minute, I love to see it. Was that one of your strategies? Wait for all the big blows to happen, and then just come in at the end to lay the parting words? No, no, that's not how it goes. That's just how it appears on screen. We're always right there in the thick of it. And then the camera kind of catches us towards the end of it. That's all, James. That's, you know, you, you just keep watching from the outside where it's nice and comfy in your armchair from the wings and everything will be all right. Might have to separate these two in a second here. Adam Jones might have to give me a couple of his cards. I'm going to play devil's advocate to both of you. I like this decision. You just had a very heated exchange. This gives both sides a chance to cool down. Good call from McGinty. Good strike from McGinty. Floats in the breeze. Flags go up. Three points on the board. 20 points to seven. And I agree with you under any other circumstance. I think if this is the World Cup qualifier and this is USA versus Chile and all that stuff happens and McGinty makes that call, I wholeheartedly support that. I just think in this situation, you want to continue to test your line out. It went well. You went forward on the last one. You earned yourself a penalty. Why not have another shot at it and see what happens? Restart underway. I, I agree with you, Mike, but a red card in this game is a red card. World Rugby sanction would come. Could you imagine losing a player for the Chile series over something as silly as just getting into a scuffle, throwing a, a stray punch or something like that? Dan Power, the voice of reason, everyone. The voice of reason, James. If you ever thought you'd see the day, Dan Power stepping in and giving us 
the actual logic in that why that works out, why that's a good call, and just, hey, guys, let's settle everything down. No stirring the pot from him. Never going to stir the pot. Not this guy. Another USA chance starting to go around the stadium now. Looking to will the boys on. Traduk is going to need a big second 40 to fly half. Push up, come down this right side yet again. Stolen. Great work there from the Petty. Onside. No, onside. Chavetta resets, goes down, looking for some ball here. At the back will be De Haas. Onside for me. Step, step. at the back oh and that's what he's been looking for too in the bright lights of Aviva as Bonasso advantage here for the knock on for the USA will they attack quickly ball at the back oh big counter ruck Wilson pack the roll away first not rolling away the rock but Wilson slowing down the ball. lame duck sitting at the back you can see the big forwards his eyes lit up when he saw the number 11 just standing there at the back of the ball Really, it came from the defensive pressure, the ability for Lepetti. We, we talked about him on attack, but if you watch him, just, just spotlight him in the next passages of play on defense. His ability to be able to get up with the ball and all tackle, he's got a lot of upper body strength. He's stripped the ball away. He's been instrumental. That midfield pairing has started to really shine. And remember, they're not committing any players that breakdown. We talked about that in the first half. And I questioned it early on, but it's really working out for him because we know that the French team wants to play fast. They want to try to play around them, but they haven't been able to because the U.S. has so many players on their feet in that defensive line. You see the head drop there. Piffoletti, another line-out loss for the USA. <laughs> Kick at the back from Marquez. Finds the sideline. Good pressure from Cam Dolan that time. Only a couple of meters gained on that box kick and had a lot to do with the pressure that Cam put on the right foot of the Barbarians, number nine. And just not a good angle as a result. And so only a couple of meters up here, the U.S. stays in attacking territory. And again, another line-out opportunity now. Let's see what they can muster off this one. Take there, Chavetta at the top. De Haas, midfield. Campbell settles this one. McGinty, a little kick through. The chase is obstructed in that tight line by the French Barbarians. Buy some time. Asabi clears McGinty. Crossfield kick. As Hermesay's unmarked, needs a bounce here. Hermesay! Almost. Almost for the USA. Scrum. What vision though from AJ McGinty. Puts the kick in. Wasn't probably the kick that he wanted. Barbarians gather it right near the goal line. Send it right back to him. He takes off across the field. Sees the cross field kick is on to his open side flanker all the way on the other side of the field. Looking at him weighing up his options. Looking over the top. Looking across the field. And then has the confidence and the ability to put that ball on a dime along that far sideline. And it's just again a matter of inches before Hermeshai is maybe is able to gather that one and maybe flick it up to De Haas, but either way, just impressive stuff from McGinty that time to put that ball right along the sideline and put some pressure on this Barbar's defense. Big pressure coming here against the French. Crouch. Scrums have been pretty evenly contested thus far this evening. Set. Should be a reset. <laughs> in the previous scrum, we saw the Barbarians right wing. Le Peg standing right in behind the set piece. We wonder if they're going to get that ball to the base and maybe send their wing and their center straight up into the midfield to set a platform. The only thing is if you do that, you lose your kick chase down that sideline, so you got to get your right winger then back on his feet. But he is hiding out around behind this drum, so we'll see if he gets his hand on it and gets involved in this play. Crouch! 
set. Called the drop goal already. Can he go to for two on the night? Short side, Marquez almost catches him napping. As they continue to push forward with Pickamole. Come on, do it. You're just in the side. He's in on the plate. Oh. That one against Abadi coming in on the side. You can see almost the frustration. You can hear the frustration in Adam Jones' voice. Like it's just baffling even to him. You had the ball, you've won possession. Why are you flying in from the side? the game on your feet. Love the way he words it as well. You can't do that. You just, you just can't do that, right? You've got to play the game on your feet. You can't do that. Come through the gate. So I think he probably just expects better, you know, and uh, McGinty again going for points here to just continue to get the scoreboard ticking over and probably try to get some life back into these te this team because they, they're, I think both teams we've seen are tired. It's been, I'm sure, a long week for them. It's hot down there in the sun. Try to conserve some of that energy for these next two weeks against Chile. So you wonder if that factors into his decision making as well. It's just one of these things. You're just continually adding pressure in this situation. You know, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You get a 22, you get the ball back, you continue to apply pressure, field position. It's already very difficult. We've seen the change in mindset, too, from the Barbars so far in this game. We know they have an attack from anywhere mentality, but frustration's forcing them to kick the ball back to the Eagles. I'd love to hear both your opinions on this one. Monday morning. Well, it's actually probably going to be Sunday morning. It's a Friday night game. Training for the USA Eagles. How much line-out work do you think is going to be done this next seven days? I wouldn't imagine straight out of the gates on the first day in. I would think they'd give him, I would hope at least they would give him some time to recover. What a kick from McGinty. You got McGinty kicking like that. You might as well go for points every time. So it, but yeah, I mean, they, they would definitely put that in their strategic plan for the week is looking at how to get this line out right. And like you said, I don't know if it's so much a personnel thing. You have two six foot eight options in the second row. You had Nick Chavetta, you had Greg Peterson. I don't know if it's personnel so much as it is just getting in sync and against the Barbarians team that was putting some pressure on them at that set piece. Yeah, it's just systems, and you can see that. You know, they're doing a very good job. There's a lot of experience in that second row of the French side, and perhaps just being able to call and read the calls, maybe even changing up calls during the game to see how it goes. It's down, knocked on by the Barbarians. Oh, from behind. Yeah, no, knock on him, More changes that? coming in. Looks like Traduc has done with his day. Is Louis Fousson. He's now on the field in the 21 jersey for the Barbarians. Just picking up on that comment that James just mentioned about strategic changes. We have seen some of that, though, at the lineup from the U.S. Their last lineup was a four-player lineup. We hadn't seen any of that in the first half, so they've sort of dwindled the numbers down, maybe to give themselves more space to operate, and it seems to be working out for them so, so well. Crouch. Speaking of not working out, those French jerseys, numbers are peeling off Set. quite a bit from some of the players down there in that Texas heat. Too much weight. From behind, from behind. For the USA off this scrum. Blue. You see Cam Dolan pointing downfield to AJ McGinty. They do not want to be playing rugby down this end of the field. The cameraman's lost it. That thing's gone so high. Just over the halfway line. Marquez. Bourson. Steps into that 10 position. Boots around the back there. Good one. Up to the halfway line by the French. They have advantage for off the feet as well. Quick tap. Marquez. A little bit of space. This is what we want to see from the French. Links up. Bourson for the line. Diving. Reaching. Scrambling. What about the defense? He's short. Referee is reaching into the pocket here. Yellow card. Going down quick ball. And it's Ruben de Haas who will take the yellow card. Penalty. But how about the quick tap? Marquez and Forson. From here. I, I can't tell you how much I love that option for a scrum half to just look up at the referee. They know the advantage is on. You're on the mark. You know it's there. You just ask for the penalty, and then you go, look at it. He just looks at him. Everybody on that U.S. team is offside. They don't stand a prayer in that situation. And then it's just about looking for options and some great support lines that time from the Barbarians to follow up and support their scrum half. But I love that heads-up rugby. I love seeing when nines do that. Middle of the field's a great place to do it. 
and that time U.S. just under mounting pressure and De Haas gets a, pe a penalty and a yellow card to go with it. So now the Barbarians have a player advantage and a power play here. And more importantly, they lose their sweeper in this situation. If you look at the role that nine plays from the scrum here, they're going to have to pull another back end, which is going to leave plenty of space. You see McGinty dropping into the pocket. There. They, they don't. Mike, you're in a safe place here. You don't have to say power play. It's OK. Just a one-man advantage. Off to the sin bin for De Haas. Penalty try at the scrum. The French are back in this. And going forward. 23 points to 14. They will have the player advantage as De Haas will cool his jets for 10. You just wonder if that's the night for Ruben as well. Nate Augsburger, it'll be 63rd minute when that card expires. You let Augsburger run out this last 27 minutes. I think you do. You've got to, you got to see all these players heading into the next match. Uh, really unlucky for De Haas in that situation because he was he field awareness there. I think he thought he was actually holding the ball up over the goal line. He was that close rather than being in a position to slow down the ball. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, I think any of us in that situation would have done the exact same thing. Water break. Yeah. And speaking of impacts, we talked about Augsburger, but how about Lasique? That is a unit that is running onto the field right now for the U.S. Did you play against Paul, New York, Utah, when he was he one of Major League Rugby? I do believe I had the displeasure of being on the receiving end of a Lasique charging run one or two times in some of those games. In the snow, mind you, uh, in Utah, and he is a powerful, powerful man. What's the thought process, Mike, when you see him coming at you? Low, high, or just, uh, you know, do you take the, the Madonna philosophy and say it with Out. One more. In, out. I'll just say, let's not, let's not uh, look at the scoreboard, check yeah. the score. Let's just do what we have to do, yeah. okay? So we've got to lift our energy. Yep. Individually, give them much energy. Team performs better, okay? Let's just really run with kick chasing. Let's just organize. I think, boys, it's been pretty good. The 10, 20, 30, like you said, it's really good. Let's just be clean. Two in, one egg. Try to get on everyone on their feet. Let's go, Happy. boys. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh, that look of determination on McGinty's face, all of us, I'm sure, at some point in our careers, having played alongside him, you know exactly what he's talking about. He's saying, fellas, let's get down there. Let's play some rugby down there. Let's play in their end. Let's continue to put these guys under pressure. Let's keep going at them. Let's be relentless. McGinty is such a passionate guy, and he brings so much energy to it, does their captain. And the boys just rally around him. So in this moment, you've got, you know, 25 minutes left in the game. That's exactly what this U.S. side needs, is someone to just step in and galvanize this in the, in the winning moments. 17. Big return there from the French, though. McGinty fields outside his 22. We'll find Brucky. Just be a little bit of a breeze advantage here in the second half for the French side. There's a low driving kick there from Lagarde. Advantage. Brucky, that one deflected. Everyone on side. Benasso flies high. Tap down for Peterson. Now some quick ball and some front foot rugby here for the US if they can use it. Big Mahoney on the field now. No advantage. We'll come back for the penalty. Offside against the French. Yeah, never retreated. It was Wuma, Alexander Wuma, never retreated there in the chase line. Interesting to see for the US who they've adopted to play the scrum half position. It looks like Mitch okay. Wilson's dropped into the captain, pocket. Please. Whereas AJ yeah, McGinty is a natural nine. I mean, you okay. want him in that. 10 and playmaking role, but when he first came over penalties. and he was playing Every in New York, he, he was a nine. He played nine in Ireland growing up. In front of the kicker, and then we have a lazy runner in the pass him. of the nine as well, okay? Time is off. Please have a word with your team. Discipline needs to improve in all areas. As we listen in to our referee there, just having a word with uh, the French Barbarians, I'll get to your question now. AJ McGinty. Uh, AJ, I think, played in the center for, the, for those teams when he came over. So he's so versatile. He brings Offside so much the talent the to the back line. You can really just put him anywhere, and he'll thrive. Uh, but for this U.S. team, you just want Mitch Wilson to get in there, distribute, get the ball into AJ's hands. But two heads-up plays for yeah, him. The, the first one, middle. that kick gets deflected, and he's the one then that just says play on, doesn't retreat, doesn't do anything like that, gets involved, taps the ball back down to Peterson, and then knows they have the penalty advantage, does the deliberate knock-on to get the penalty and then give him a line out. So really good heads up play by McGinty to set this up for them.
Chavetta flies high. Just outside the 22 now of the French Barbarians. The Eagles looking to strike back after giving fight. up that penalty fight. try. Ball is good as it continues to push forward. Wilson, he has stepped into that nine roll. Bodies come flying in from the French. Ball is still good though, on their feet. Great stuff here from the USA. Four, Ball collapse. comes down, advantage for dragging it. Dolan. Penalty advantage number four. At the back. Hands up, hands up. Dolan, dummies. Almost sneaks through there, Dolan. And we could be equaled up here at 14 players apiece. There's the yellow card. Wait, wait, wait. Adam Jones had warned the, the French card. just moments ago to get the attitude in check, and this will definitely provide an attitude adjustment for this Barbarian's outfit. Yellow card. And now we are 14 on 14. Roman Sazi. You heard the referee. Again, a good driving ball from the United States. Just patience there. It rolled, and it went with the roll. That's the important thing on a rolling ball. They went with the roll, resourced the bodies, and this is a, it came from a good line-out. We've talked about fixing the line-out. The last two line-outs from the United States, they're back on track. And this is what you want to see, right? In a similar situation just a couple minutes earlier, they went for the points. This time they decide to go for the corner. They have the leg up in the line-out. They just drove them really well. They're going to try to do it again, but can't bring that one down. Changes Joe Tarfetti's on the field, as is Mikey Sassini from the high. Penalty goes to the French. Wengluski, it's an entire new front row for the USA. Number seven. Marquez is tempted to take that quick tap again, Mike. He was looking for that cross-field kick, try to open this game up a little bit. But maybe frustration that couldn't find his outside players to chase it. So instead they go to the air and take the line out. But here we are, we gave them the, what the broadcaster's curse was that we were just talking about how good their lineout's been the past couple times. And then here they go and they can't, can't gather that one because that was a big one. That was a really big one for them. Five meters out. They had just driven this Barbarians team a good 15 meters, rolled around with it. And now all of a sudden, you know, they find themselves overthrow, penalty, and now they're back in their own half. Great take at the top there from Umat. Stagnant mall here for the French. Marquez rushes in. Shifts to the right. For Song out the back. They continue to push wide. That one has gone a mile forward. The guard able to find his runners on the outside. Scrum here for the Eagles. Been impressed with their scrum tonight. It's been quite strong. Let's see how this new front row handles the heat, though. Get a good close-up look at our new front row. Greg Peterson and Nick Chavetta still bolstering them from behind. And Ben Benasso. So four changes, half the pack different now from the, for the U.S. from the team that started the game. Chance Wengluski there, recent Major League Rugby champion with Rugby New York. Good little shout-out for Chance and his teammates from the New York City area. I think for, for Chance, the only downside was he had to end the celebrations the early to go into camp. He probably wanted to stay and continue. Not sure if they've actually stopped celebrating, Mike. I don't think they have. I think the last bit I saw was Andy Ellis parading through Times Square and Central Park with the MLR shield. He's taking pictures with the Times Square Spider-Man and all of the different characters hanging around people who probably have no idea what the mlr shield is but that's okay it's uh it's cool that the mlr shield is making its way back around the big apple Bind. set big scrum from the french see you see it oh the ck wants a touch adam jones almost feels the wrath of paul the ck now peterson Wilson showing all the skills as he steps into nine from the wing. Kick goes down deep. Lagarde 
Looks for the spiral. Look at that kick from the guard. That is a long driving kick. Brucky can't handle. Low driving kick from Marcel Brucky. Bounces a good one. Sits up now. The French will attack. Marquez looping around for Son. He kicks instead. <laughs> Finds some space down the near touchline. McGinty. He gets on his skates as he gets back under pressure from Marquez. And that's a big territorial pick up there for the French Barbarians. The U.S. losing that kick tennis battle back and forth. You can see, though, there's a real intent to try to just send this Barbarians team backwards, continue to deflate them, continue to take the wind out of their sails, and try to just wear them down through the last 20 minutes of this game. But they, on the losing end of that kick exchange, find themselves back in their own end off some good pressure on AJ's kick that time. Line out take there from the Barbarians. That one again, very flat, close to being forward. They'll let it play. Marquez steps in. Picks up Jolie. Now they come down. Fosson. Dubia. Outside the 22. Marquez. Little jinking run there from Emery. Midfield. Fosson. Dummies picks up Jordi. Ball sits down. Little chip over the top there from Dubia. Oh, big collision comes in. Brucky stays on. down. Will be a knock on against the USA. Worrying signs here as Marcel Brucky remains on the turf of Aviva. Good little option there. Getting in from behind. Nice little chip over the top. Very difficult to recover there. It just took the man and the ball at the same time, Brucky. We see on the replay a good heads up play nasty bounce oh just knee right in the ribs so the glute is it the glute really or has he got him in the back there mike up. both with like maybe both knees getting contact there ribs and towards that glute area but he's up and walking and on his feet maybe just a nice contusion that he'll have to show for it speaking of your sunday morning comment earlier Said the same for them. But that's a tough play, and you know what? The, I think the credit to this U.S. team, they are forcing the French team into making some of these plays like that to have to kick over the top because they're so fanned out on defense. France can't seem to find those seams in their defensive line, and so they're putting it in behind them, like you said. Be interesting to see on the scrum here. We've noticed in the last scrum the dominance of the French. They were down a man in the scrum too against a full contingent, and they were almost able to get one against the head. Barbarians split the field here with their backs. The two lined up to the left, three to the right. Mitch Wilson's still in at the scrum half position. You'd think he'd probably drop in behind, behind Cam Dolan, so he could play both directions. And the French are pulling one of the backs into the scrum to have a full eight, to push on the eight. Doing extremely well. Off the back they go. Umat. Marquez, flat pass, big collision comes in. Another one from Peterson. He's had a couple of big hits. Oh, he's cramping up, reaching for the toes. Six foot eight. That's a long reach. This one's built forward. Benasso, they'll play quickly. Sassani Fengai. Oh, the skills from Mikey Sassani Fengai. He puts it on the boot. Bounces a good one. Sits up. Benasso. Ball spills out. Penalty will go to the USA. Not rolling away. Let's see if they keep the tempo up here and play quickly. They should be looking for the yellow card to come back in. How about that skill set from Sassane Fengai? Just turnover ball. Doesn't see the outlet pass to the outside, but does see the green space out in front. Blasts it up ahead and then gets a beautiful bounce straight into the arms of Hermeshais. And the U.S. earning themselves another penalty with this French team just scrambling backwards. It's about as much aggression as you'll get out of a winger in a game of rugby. He's just been bottled up on the flank, James. He was excited to get in there and have his say. It's not it's very un-French for them to be vocal as well. They're very quiet. You know. 
in with people. Here we go. This is the big test, the line out. It's been the challenge all night for the USA. And they get this ironed out just a little bit. But check out this kick. Looks for the options to the outside. Dummies, runs, and then decides, you know what? I'm just going to blast this thing forward. And this is a 99 meter turnaround, just about, for the US. I mean, here they get the penalty. That was the kick. They had their backs literally up against their goal line. And now here they are, about five meters out. So big turn of events for this U.S. side. Tap down. So Talfati does well. Augsburger on the field now. Full contingent for the Eagles. This was anything I. Scrambles. Augsburger under pressure. Lays it back. McGinty. Basica. Big counter up comes in from the Barbarians. Dolan. Eagles do well there under pressure. It's a weak game possession. McGinty quick pass for Petty under pressure. Still with the USA. Still a lot of intensity in this game. 66 minutes gone. Great pass to Sani Fengai. Into the 22. Looks for support. Can't handle. The greasy conditions starting to come through here in Houston. As Wilson, under pressure, his opposite number chasing. Fasal B. Counter ruck is clean here from the Barbarians. As Marquez, they go wide. They've got numbers, they've got space. Dubia, he needed to find his outside runners. Marquez, quick pop pass. They continue. And now spill forward at the last moments. I think you said it best, Dan. That, that's the greasy conditions for both teams. You can see players cramping up, lying on the ground, knees bent, head between their knees. I mean, these are two tired teams playing in some really, really wet, sloppy, humid conditions down there. And that ball's got to be like a bar of soap as it's spilling around. It's six, 67 minutes into the game. You just see the intensity of this Barbarian side. Ability to be able to punish you from everywhere. And it started with the defensive pressure. A lot of defensive pressure here. Fang Ai makes a great break as he goes to offload here. Goes away. And at this stage here, it was a nice touch. And the kick down the sideline by Wu Ma. Applying a lot of pressure in the breakdown. And this is what this team can do. They're not out of the game. 67 minutes. They're still in it. Both sides getting some well earned water. Chavetta, 67 minutes into the game. Forwards coach Pittman. Hey, listen, go on, go on. Straight up lane. It's right here. It's right on the inside. Yeah. 4-2. First job. Safety. Stop the floor, please. Protect the scrum from me, mate. Eh? Boys. 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 I'm back on here. 13 minutes left to play. The Eagles holding on to a nine-point lead. So I got a question for you, fellas, as we hear born in the USA playing in the background of Aviva Stadium. Does that bring back memories of wearing the USA jersey yourselves here in the born in the USA Bruce Springsteen hit playing in the stadium? You know, the only memory it brings back is our great friend Lewis Stanfield singing it on a bus every time he got on and grab a microphone even if it wasn't his turn and he would start singing it and uh, for our viewers at home he was quite tone deaf so it was a painful experience really brings back a lot of memories and some good memories too you've got players tonight Mitch Wilson he's been good so far this technically isn't a test cap but the first chance to pull on the USA jersey, you'll remember this for the rest of your life. He really looks the good so far tonight. 
It's interesting you get that opportunity. Some players really stand up and shine. Wilson has done that tonight. Is it enough to get a spot in the 23 against Chile? We will only find out later this week when that's not his name, but he definitely doesn't look like he's out of his depth here. One of the absolute favourites in New England, just an absolute workhorse. I know the whole crew up there, head coach Scott Matthew, Tom Connolly, their performance director, right up to the ownership. Just love what Mitch Wilson brings, and we're seeing it tonight in this USA side. He hustled, he came, I mean, just watching him play all season for the Free Jacks. He is a wing that looks for work, and he hustled. I've seen him get, the teams have picked on him because he's a little bit undersized in terms of height, so sometimes he finds himself at that disadvantage, but he has always risen to the challenge. Every time they've kicked down his channel, every time they've sent big runners down his way, he has punched well above his weight and really stood out as a bright star in Major League Rugby this season with the New England Free Jacks. Now he goes here to the Barbarians, Marquez, looking to get some ball quick here off Augsburger. And now he likes to play quick, Marquez. They'll elect the scrum. They've had some dominance in the scrum in the second half too, James. Well, they do go quickly. Big collision, Soseni Fengai. Looking to iron some of the wrinkles out of those French jerseys. Now Marquez to the line, short. The Messais locks down the Barbarians. Toffetti looking for the steal, doesn't get it. Ball will come back here. For Son to the right here, his Jolie is tackled midfield. Now Marquez, dummies, little gap. Chavetta shuts it extremely quickly. Quick hands, great pass, great hands. Well taken, one more pass and there's the try. This game is alive with 10 to play. Yeah, it was good work. They had the penalty advantage there. Rafael Lagarde was able to get across and score. They'll take this quickly, but it came from the ability for them to be able to build pressure at the scrum. The scrum is under real pressure. We talked about the USA scrum to start the match being so dominant as we see the nice interplay through hands here. That stage, Dyer came in and it was Lagarde able to score. Looking into Chile, the set piece from the Eagles, perhaps an area of concern tonight. Yeah, it's definitely been inconsistent. The line-out was inconsistent early on. The scrum started off, like you said, dominant and stable. And then as this game has dragged on, you've seen this French team really start to apply a lot of pressure in that area. And it pays off for them there. The U.S. just disjointed on defense, trying to get in passing channels, not going straight into contact. And... Paying for it that time with Legard capping off a fine play for the French Barbarians. 23 points to 21, the score now. Those AJ McGinty penalty goals starting to look valuable. Marquez. Now he has been alive wise since he's come on the field here for this French Barbarians outfit. Kicks under pressure, does well, drives this deep into USA territory. Cardi with the hands, though, picks up Dolan. There we know kicking from Cam Dolan as he takes us back into the teeth of the defense. Augsburger, short side. Just any thing, I. A lot of quality touches. Ball in hand, a lot of big hits, too, from Sassini Fengai in his short spell here this evening. Augsburger will kick. Chase coming through from the USA. Pressure. And you can Christian Dyer there on the try score of Lagarde. And a momentum shift here for the Eagles. Good kick from Osberger. Put it up. Gave Dyer time to go down there and make a play. That's just what you need out of a box kick. You need to give your wing an opportunity to make a play. And that time Dyer gets down there, drags his opposite out of bound. And that's the advancement you might hope to get. Best case scenario off a box kick like that, you turn around, you find yourselves in an attacking zone with a line out. But again, the line out's been inconsistent. So, you know, it's a close game. They've got to pull these ones down. They've gone to the four man option this time. So they've shortened it up, try to create space give themselves some runners in open play. Let's see what they do with this one. They're way to the back, Chavetta. Augsburger flat, the CK. 
barreling run from Lusike. Homosei likewise with the quick pick. Now Cardi, flat pass wide. Lopetti under pressure. They defended Lopetti exceptionally well here in the second half. Have the French. Augsburg, a slow ball looking to bring one of those French players offside, and he's done just that. Cardi to the line. Long pass again. They come wide. So Semi Fengai, another quality touch here for the replacement hooker. As Cardi goes wide, this one intercepted. Will come back. Will come back. And now a question of what to do. No AJ McKinchy on the field. Up by two. Have to take the points in this position. Should be a penalty. About 30 meters out. Virtually dead in front of the goalpost. And they'll take the points. I think this is a smart option in this situation. Yeah, definitely a smart option. I talked about it earlier on. I'd like to go to the corner, but this close game. Confidence is so important to walk away with a win in this situation. You know, you're up 23 21. You go to the corner, you roll the dice. I said earlier on, you got really nothing to lose in this side of game, but confidence is one thing you want to carry in with you into these next two games against Chile. So if you can get that extra cushion on the scoreboard, put them out of a, at least a kick opportunity to win the game for the French Barbarians, force them to have to score a converted try to win it. That could be huge for this for this Eagles team to get a confidence boost going into the next two weekends. You talk about momentum in sports, James. How important. Listen, a lot of people this week came out when they saw this French Barbarians roster and said, you know, hashtag pray for the Eagles. And, you know, they've come out and outperformed this. How much does this affect their, you know, confidence and their momentum going into the Chile series? Makes no mistake of that. And addressing your point. When you're at this level, I don't think that even enters your mind. And, and we'll talk about that from the standpoint of where USA Rugby is at the moment with Major League Rugby. In the past, you didn't feel like you had that barometer to test yourself at the highest level. So when you're coming out of playing club rugby in the States into a situation like this, you felt like it was a test every time. But all these players are playing top level rugby week in and week out. We see the influence of MLR so far on the confidence of this Eagle side tonight. And Mike. You're a player that has lived both generations, pre and post MLR. Did you start to notice a difference in the level of play, in particular with, with some of these international players in Major League Rugby? Absolutely. The MLR has really just paid so many dividends for the athletes themselves because they're finally able to treat themselves like professionals. You know, they, they're able to wake up in the morning, do their recovery, do whatever they need to do to get their bodies right and their minds right on a daily basis to compete and perform. James and I spoke about this earlier. The numbers might not be there yet. I mean, you're talking about several hundred more professional games for the French Barbarian team. You know, the U.S. is not quite there yet, but it will happen, right? It just takes time. And, and the more time that these young players get, like a Tavite Lopetti, who's just now in his finished his rookie year, I mean, you fast forward to that Rugby World Cup in 2031, 2033, right? That timeline for the U.S., he's going to have those kind of numbers under his belt and that's when i think the u.s is really going to see the mlr start to pay off much here for the eagles and james one of the questions i have for you here is there's a lot of parallels between where the game is now and where it was in japan we saw japan go on you know, a, a giant killing spree against the Springboks. they did the same against Ireland. they qualified for the finals uh, in the world cup in japan usa 2031 they will host the world cup do we see the dividends of major oh, rugby? Some people now are like impatiently saying, where is the, the payout? Is it a decade? Will it follow that same timeline that it took Japanese rugby when they went professional for the same effect to, to be on the game here in the US? I would say it's going to happen faster. And the reason being is, is the level of athleticism in the United States. So you're able to shorten that process now from a 10 year period to a five year period. Nothing against Japanese rugby is a very system oriented rugby. They're very good at it. But once the USA gets a little more experience, just the, the athleticism, and you can see that, the world is starting to take notice of American players. Look at how many players are being poached out of MLR, American born players, and going playing at the highest level internationally. That could be one right there in the screen to Vita Lepete. How long until the heavy? deep coffers of European rugby come reaching for him. But you'd hope that the MLR would want to keep players like that here in the United States as best as you can. But to do that, you got to compete with the salary. 
These guys are going to get offered some big paychecks overseas if they're that good. You know, you want to keep Tavite Lopetti playing in the United States. You want to keep him at home on the West Coast in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle, you know, for the USMLR. Just, you know, the professionalism is there. But for some of these guys, the money needs to be there, too, if we want to keep our homegrown talent here and not let them go abroad. Into the final three minutes here at Aviva Stadium. Some big performances tonight from both these sides. Some cobwebs as well that have been blown off. But I say that just thinking about my last point as well. Think of how much how much of a positive experience we've all had from playing rugby in another country and playing overseas and how that helped our game as well. So as much as we'd love to not lose some of these guys, think of the impact it could have on them and their career to get that different perspective on the game. So just something to keep in mind as well as we continue to watch this game close out. See a lot of intensity as the Barbarians just Clean for a turnover here from referee Jones. They know they need a turnover. They need the ball. Augsburger will kick. He'll give them that opportunity. They need to feel that they cannot feel it. The guard. Well, he scored a brilliant try just a few moments ago. Two errors since then against the winger. And now a scrum for the USA. Can they stabilize the set piece though? Two great box kicks from Augsburger as well. Like the first one we saw Dyer was able to drag his opposite out. That time they're getting so much pressure on that ball in the air. They forced the turnover again. So really well done to Nate to come onto the field late in the game, put in two excellent kicks that keep his team camped out in this French Barbarians half. Again, Mike. Iron man performance from Dolan there. 18 minutes he would play, you would think, with just over a minute left on the clock. No sign of a replacement coming his way tonight. Flatus attacking line is here. The CK, Lopetti. Seconds off the clock here for the USA Eagles. Lucardi missed most of Major League Rugby. You see that left peck there with the padding. He had a, a tear in the preseason. Came back late for the LA Giltinis. But still in, in need of some minutes coming into this Chile series, though. We can get this scrum to stabilize. Do we think we see Lasique straight off the base go straight up the guts of this French Barbarians defense for the final play, or at that now that we're over the 80 minute, 80 minute mark? So when you see Dyer pointing to the scoreboard, he's saying here, call that all off, just get the ball to the base and kick it out. I bet that's got to be what's on here. Change of plans, fellas. Get the ball to the back and just scoop it out of bounds. Now a true test of the French medal. Do they want the tour to continue after 80 minutes here and go for the win? Set piece will be the test. The scrum. Going to be to the French. Keeps the Barbarians alive now. There we go. So one more shot to see what they can do. Game cannot end on a line out, so they will kick this ball downfield. Look, opt for better field position. As they look to the dying stages, and they come back. All right, Patterson, you're the French Barbarians here. What are you doing? You going for your mall that's worked well, or are you slinging the ball and trying to make something happen? I think you got to. You've got to stick with them all. You have to try and draw in some of those players. Get in behind them. They've only been good tonight when the USA has been on the back foot. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Keep this in tight. Force them to play you up the middle and then see if it eventually opens up out wide. But too many handling errors. The ball's a bit too slick. Can't risk throwing it around right now. Let's give this USA forward pack a test late in the game.
Great throw and take here from the Barbarians. Everything on the line here. This game, well, it will be decided by both these sides on the field. Marquez pleading, pleading to Adam Jones. There's the advantage he wanted. 35 meters out from the try line. He comes wide. Wumat. And the size with the steal. No advantage though. We'll come back for the penalty. I don't anticipate they're going to go back down the corner again. The driving ball has been an area of success. Able to get the penalty. Bang into the corner. It's going to put an extreme amount of pressure on the USA defensive line out. Get to see what this US line out is really made of. Final moment of the game here. They'll play this line out out. Really test the character. You're tired. You're flat out on your feet. And you have to hold your ground here. You can see Gary Gold right there. Just he's you talk about feeling pressure. He's in that he's in that walkie-talkie. He's definitely feeling pressure for his players right now. How much do you think he wants to put a jersey on and run out there and stop this mall himself? 83 minutes. Reminded me of one of those. Uh, expose a tv show with the window bar across his eyes there you know with protecting his identity Little juggle at the top the skipper sazi advantage again here they go they peel away homicide is the last line of defense does well the eagles will be tested to close this game out Another charge from the French Barbarians. They come short side yet again. So close to the line. Sazi, the skipper, will have another crack to no avail. Quick pass. Driven backwards, so good defense from the Eagles. No advantage. The penalty again comes. Look for Marquez to go quickly. He'll elect for the scrum. No, he's called off by one of his opposites. No, he wants the scrum. We're going to the scrum, Mike. How about this? Four minutes into extra time. Look at Gary Gold. Look at Gary Gold. Oh, man. Talk about heated. Oof. What do you think Gary's saying? We've got an 11 o'clock flight to Santiago, Chile. Get, tell Adam Jones to call this game. Just penalty after penalty after penalty against this U.S. team. Just giving extra lives to this French side late in the game and oh man look at the French players down just trying to gather themselves before this big moment before this big scrum take a look at Gary Goldjack who'd want to be a head coach the stress and if you look at the lead in they've had a very short lead up to this game in terms of being in camp I know that the Barbas are an exhibition team here but if you look down this roster of this this side there's a lot of players that play together this Bordeaux side heavily represented here the Eagles they've come together they've got international players coming in a mix of domestic players some players having time off which Eagles the Bordeaux Eagles or the USA Eagles oh there's two Eagles here let's not confuse the people at home This is the test. This is the litmus test. This is about as much pressure as you get. This is test match environment. The immense amount of pressure on the scrum. There's been the change in the second row. Some big bodies in there. Mahoney's come on. They're going to have to stand up to this litmus test. And this is exactly what you want if you're the Eagle staff right now. I know Gary Gold in this moment feels lots of pressure, very high strung. But this is why you set this game up. Right? You set this game up before two of the biggest matches you'll see as a head coach of this team because it's so important to really test yourself against some of the best opposition in the world. And look at that right now. That is not a good sign for the USA or for USA fans as we see Taufete going off. And Paul Mullen, well rested though, mind you now, coming back on as a front row replacement and a big test for this U.S. front row right now. Five minutes past the 80th minute mark. This game still alive. Five points separates these sides. Almost a little bit of a Ted Lasso, really, but in, in a draw here. 
a draw. Yeah, isn't that a sign of the apocalypse if you end a game in a draw? Love the Ted Lasso reference. I think you're inspired. The mustache, as I sit here and look at your Ted Lasso mustache, I think that's been up your sleeve all game. You've just been waiting for it. I just believe. I just be telling everyone, believe. Here we go, Marquez. Can he be the inspiration here for this barber inside? Spills out the back. He goes to the line. Defense is up to the task, though. Marquez again. He wants his forwards to come in. Picks up runners. Arthur Jolie, the replacement front roller. He's scrummaging, has been hugely influential here for the French Barbarians. Another bite of the cherry for the French. Marquez, quick, for Song. They look to go wide, juggle, lost forward. That'll be the ball game. Gary Gold can put down the walkie-talkie. Hugs all round in the coach's box. They will hold on. 26 points to 21. And with, let's just call it an upset right now. The French came in here as favourites with the roster, James. They had the experience. They had the big players. The USA, they've stood up. They'll take some confidence into the Chile series now. And it came off the back of perhaps what's the new future of USA Rugby. New players stepping up. Dyer, Lapetti, a number of new faces in this Eagles squad. I'm sure we're going to call their name out a lot. They have to be pleased coming away with a victory. How good is this win for the United States. I mean, going into this, there were lots of naysayers, as you said. Probably only those men in red, white, and blue right there in the U.S. Eagles jerseys were probably the only one in world rugby that thought that they could pull this one out, and they absolutely did. They rose to the occasion. They had a great tactic, great game plan, loved their defensive positioning in terms of just fanning out, giving the Barbarians nothing, Blitzing in the midfield, heavy like James says, and then young players stepping up. A huge statement for them going down to Santiago. A big, big win going in to America's birthday. Can we get a little born in the USA by Bruce Jean? Come on, Mike, give us a little bit. That's not my forte. You know this. This has been us just listening to Lou. We could get him on speakerphone, though, if we'd like at some point, maybe, and get him to give us his rendition. But, man, what a game. And congratulations to that USA side. That was awesome. That will wrap us up here from Aviva Stadium, where the USA Eagles have run out with us 26-21 over the French Barbarians. The James Patterson, Mike Petrie, our entire crew here at Next Level Rugby. I'm Dan Power. Have a great long weekend and happy birthday, America.